Thanks for being here, everyone. I do appreciate it. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the proper placement of candlestick patterns. You know, one of the things we often talk about and the things you often see is that uh, candlestick patterns get placed in specific areas and, and we get all excited about a candlestick pattern. But sometimes, um, I and I notice this from comments and things um, in the room and from different folks is we're not really getting the context of where those candlesticks should be placed where those patterns should be coming into place and that's really the purpose for this uh, presentation is to remember that there are uh, um, places where we want to look for these patterns and sometimes you'll find a pattern and it's not placed correctly and it really means nothing and we can get ourselves caught up um, in that uh, that that pattern and make a mistake. So first thing I'm going to do, this is going to seem uh, very very amateurish um, here at the beginning, um, is just talking about trend. You guys know that trend is really really important to me, but I also believe trend is very very important in identifying good quality candlestick patterns. And you guys know stock uh, market may have been uh, drifting down here. Um, I don't believe the trend begins until right here. Now, some folks want to chase in right here saying that's the beginning, but it really isn't. If the technical definition of a trend, it doesn't begin until there's a higher low. And it's, all, it's going to have much more importance if it is based off of some kind of support level in the chart or a trend in the chart. If you can combine those two things, the signal becomes even stronger. So when you're looking for good quality patterns, I think one of the most important things is, is to make sure that you're following those important patterns in some kind of a trend. If you're seeing those sideways stocks or stocks that have been whipping all over the place, not a very good situation to be trading in. And those candlesticks pat patterns can be problematic in there because they may actually mean nothing at all. Um, but we get caught up in the pattern itself and um, can run ourselves directly into trouble. Now, of course, the bearish trend, just the opposite of that, that bearish trend doesn't begin until here. And you guys hear me say this all the time. When I'm looking for a long trade, let's go back to the bullish chart here. When I'm looking for a long position, I always want to be buying stocks at or near price support or trend at or near price support or trend. I don't want to be buying stocks that are at or near price resistance levels in the chart. I don't want to be chasing a chart. I want to buy my trades here. And the, the more often that I, that I do that, as I work through these um, trade setups, um, I get better and better trades with low risk entries when I do that. So when you see these candle patterns that might be placed up here, they may be bullish, but they're also higher risk entry trades. And I try to avoid those. Now, the same thing is true on a bearish trade. I want that pullback, that pullback right here, or what people will call a bear flag. I want that pushback up toward the trend or toward price resistance in the chart. I want to find that level in here where we run into that resistance and then that failure pattern occurs right here. I always want to be selling stocks or shorting stocks at or near price resistance or downtrend. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now trends can continue on with these consolidation patterns, but once again, that consolidation over toward that trend can provide that good entry signal to the downside, okay? And by the way, guys, feel free to ask questions on this as we go along. There's, that's, you know, just friends talking here. When we look at um, a hammer pattern, um, hammer patterns show up in charts all over the place absolutely all over the place. 
But the true hammer pattern, what the actual Japanese candlestick folks, uh, Japanese used to call this the dragon. Any any um, candle that had a wick, excuse me, a tail, a tail three times longer than the body was called a dragon. That was a very important symbol in the Japanese culture. And so calling that a dragon meant that was a strong signal, a chance of reversal. In the Western culture, we started calling these hammers because they kind of look like that hammer pattern. And a hammer pattern can be formed in a lot of different ways. But where we want to be looking for those hammer patterns is at the bottom of a downtrend. We don't want to be searching for this hammer pattern in the midst of an up move. We want to see that stock has moved up and pulled back. And then we look for that hammer pattern. You'll often find hammers after a big move down. And right down here at the bottom, there'll be a hammer. Okay? Now, hammers for me always require a follow through. There is no such thing for me as just buying this hammer and following straight through and just buying right there. I want to make sure that buyers actually come in play. Because let's imagine the next day's candle is like that. Did that hammer pattern have any validity at all? No, it's just merely a pause. It's, it's nothing more than a pause in the downtrend. Might have been some news or some volatility that created that, but without that follow through, this pattern really has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. So make sure you're paying attention to those follow throughs. Now, one thing I will tell you is the head, the body of that candle the body of that candle can be either a, well, I've got these drawn up in red and green. Um, you guys know it would be white and black for me, but the head of that candle can be um, either color. Okay. So you have to be really, really careful with this. And what I always do with, a, with something like this is if I see the hammer, I just pl place a price alert across there and I wait for that to give me that signal that we're going to follow through and kind of cross to the upside. Now, another thing that I'm showing in this pattern here, and these are the details that you have to pay attention to if you're going to be a candlestick trader, and that is if there is a window, okay, meaning a gap down to this hammer and then a gap up from this hammer, this is a stronger reversal signal. If we leave those tiny windows behind, or even large windows behind, the reversal signal gains strength. Because what happened here is the sellers exhausted themselves, and buyers found value here and strongly took over in that chart. So I want to find these. If um, I want to find these where they're coming in along a trend, you can have that tail drop below the trend and then bounce back up oftentimes. I also want to be finding these where we're catching that price support. Uh, stock has been moving up and we pull back, hit that price support, and then we see that kind of candle coming into play. So the hammer pattern has to be well placed and we have to think about that pretty carefully. Now, one of the things I used to do a lot when I first learned the, these patterns is I made the mistake of just thinking, well, the pattern means it has to go up. And as I just, just mentioned here, there is nothing about this candle pattern that says it has to do anything. Okay, and I, I would chase in to these in the wrong places in the trade. I would chase into that hammer pattern and end up just getting killed on that trade because I wasn't trading the pattern properly where it should be placed. Okay, so it's very, very important where that candle pattern is placed, how it's developed. And so you'll want to watch that pretty closely. So follow through for me 
is what I always look for on that pattern. Now on the opposite side, the Hanging Man. The Hanging Man is almost an identical candle pattern, okay? But that pattern forms at the top of a pattern, okay? Forms at the top of a move. So we wanna look for that Hanging Man pattern after the stock has moved up. I've seen this a lot where this will have kind of a hammer looking pattern but it might be in a consolidation and I get a comment from someone, oh, there's a hammer here. Okay, but it's not at the top of a pattern. Unless it follows through, it probably doesn't mean anything. The best hammers are always going to be placed at or near a top and at or near price support, or excuse me, price resistance or downtrend. So for example, a stock that has been moving down stock that has been moving down rallies up and this price pattern shows up right near the downtrend of that that's a beautiful reversal pattern we always want to wait for that follow through so just use that head the body of that candle any cross down below there is a confirmation of follow through to the downside and you get those great short trades right in here the other place to look for these patterns is the stock has been moving up substantially. We reach up here and all of a sudden this occurs. We get that hammer pattern up here right at the top. And hammers are often coupled with other candles. They're, they're usually not just one and done. You can have a hammer pattern and a spinning top doji. You can have a hammer pattern and a shooting star combined. We'll talk about shooting stars in just a little bit. Um, David Elliott used to look for a pattern where there would be a hanging man and there would be a doji on either side of it. Um, and he would call that the Shanghai duo. Um, and that usually was at a price top like this where we would get that control of the stock starts to reverse toward the sellers. We've kind of exhausted the buyers for the short term and that pattern starts to sell off. So please keep in mind we want to look at that follow through. We want to end it, um, that follow through in that trade. And keep in mind that we can have these in groups up here, spinning or where we have hanging men, spinning top, shooting stars, in groups of a top as that starts to break down, as the sellers start to take over. Okay, the same type of looking pattern is the inverted hammer. The inverted hammer can be seen at the bottom. You want to look for those at the bottom of a price pattern. They're going to be where the stock finds that support level, where they find that trend, um, and we get that inverted hammer pattern. Once again, for me, this pattern requires follow through to the upside. Now, when you think about these price patterns, um, what we're looking at here is sometime during the day, the buyers push this up and sometime toward the end of the day, the sellers pushed it down back down, but they weren't able to take it all the way back down. Okay, so kind of keep in mind that this is one of those uh, struggles that's going on between buyers and sellers. And the reason you want that follow through, because we see these patterns quite frequently in charts, but if it doesn't follow through to the upside, if we get a candle like this, that inverted hammer pattern means absolutely nothing. Okay, we could be just a pause in the downtrend um, overall. So make sure that these have good support levels under them or coming in place somewhere around that trend and you will find much better inverted hammer patterns in that placement. The next one I've got here is the shooting star. It's that inverted hammer type pattern, but it occurs at the top. Kind of like what we are printing today in the Dow and the SPY, where we get a rush of buying going in. They try to push it up, but we kind of exhaust the buyers. The buyers kind of wear out 
the sellers take over we push back down by the way keep in mind the body of these candles can be different colors they don't they don't have to be um, um, a black candle or a red like I show here it could be white and still get that follow through to the downside okay so as we find these we want to be looking the for those up near these price resistance levels we want to be looking for them in that rally back that bear flag type move back toward price resistance okay in the chart that's where we want to be looking for those if we find those in places that are just kind of hanging out in midair there's no resistance there's no support uh, there's no trend in that area we have to be really careful because these can certainly just follow through just a resting day follow through on up to the upside so making sure that that candle is placed in the right location makes a very big difference overall okay so you'll want to watch that pretty closely um let's take a look at um the bullish engulfing candle now this is one of the first candle patterns i learned and i thought man i had the world by the tail by learning the bullish engulfing candle you know rick is one of the best candle stick people i i know I, I, seriously he is he he he's he knows more about candlesticks than i've ever known okay and you will commonly hear rick talk about the bullish engulfing candle in different places and he may buy that but believe me he wants to see follow through because if he doesn't get that follow through in that candle if it's not placed correctly in the chart He's not going to be too keen on it. We can find bullish uh, engulfing candles in lots of different places. And if they're not situated around good support levels, around good solid trends, things like that, we have to be really extra careful because we can get a pattern like this and then just see that reversal come in and right on back down. Um, to that downside so make sure they're in a good quality placement where we can get those low risk entries to trades and that's one of the reasons i'm talking about this so much is we want to make sure that those patterns are correctly placed so that we as traders are doing the best job that we can in taking those trades that have a higher expectancy and a lower risk to our stops and if we if we ignore where they're placed we end up causing ourselves some problems and folks tend to get into a bad situation really quickly thinking they found the best pattern in the world i know i did initially hey the bullish engulfing pattern it has to go up from here i learned no it, it does not it does not so we want to look for those at or near that bottom now the bullish engulfing pattern is obviously very i didn't draw this quite right and that sh uh, candle should be a little bit further down from that red one but we wanted to um, engulf the entire body of the red or the down candle prior to you can also find bullish engulfing candles in consolidations if we get a long longer consolidation several days of consolidation you'll often find it will be that bullish engulfing candle that breaks that consolidation to the upside and starts moving us out so they can be placed even within a consolidation but we want to be looking for those somewhere near that price support or trend in the chart that gives us more um, uh, a higher quality pattern um, it only technically um, JP it only needs to engulf the body of the candle it does not have to engulf the wicks and tails now wicks and tails is something we always have to pay attention to if if I had drawn this with a great big tail down here well first off that's going to look more like a hammer right and then we have a hammer follow through okay if it has a big long wick on that it's going to end up looking more like a inverted hammer an inverted hammer and a follow through 
Okay. So it doesn't necessarily have to encompass those wicks and tails, but it needs to encompass the full body of the candle before. Good question. Bearish engulfing candle. We want to look for those at market tops or stock tops. That's where that stock has been running up nicely in a trend. Our trend may be running out of steam up here. Okay running out of steam and we get this pattern showing up. Remember the bullish engulfing candle and the bearish engulfing candle. We want to get confirmation by seeing that follow through. So once again, what I do is I place those alerts in the charts. I wait for the trade to prove to me. Now it doesn't mean I won't take this trade, that bearish engulfing candle, depending on how it's placed. But I want to make sure I get follow through because if I don't get follow through to the downside, that bearish engulfing is not valid. Okay, even if we had a candle show up like this, that is not a valid bearish engulfing candle if we don't get follow through on that on that pattern. So make sure you're looking for those where we're running into that price resistance, where we're finding those downtrends. This is that rally back in the downtrend. We hit those levels and we see that price swing to the other side. That increases the probabilities on these trades and gives us lower risk entries. Okay, so the bearish engulfing candle, make sure it's placed properly. Now, one of my favorite patterns of all time is, is the Morning Star. I love the Morning Star. Morning Star is a three candle pattern. It's going to be a, a down candle and a little tiny candle wedged between another up candle. Okay, that's a reversal pattern. It's a three candle pattern that you have to watch for. And once again, for some reason, I can see these very, very easy. Color doesn't matter on what, JP? Um, on on the reversal here, on the on this pattern, yeah. If this is if this is white, it, it that doesn't matter. The engulfing candle, the engulfing candle does matter. Okay, that does matter. So we've had, if you're looking at my standard charts, these these candles, these up candles are white. This would be a black candle, okay? It does matter. The engulfing candle for bearish engulfing requires this to be that, that down facing candle, you know, where we open up here and we close down here. Bears are gaining control. Okay, so it is very important on the color for these. You want that, you want that candle um, showing that bearishness coming in. Okay. Now on this one, um, on the Morning Star, does it matter if this is red or green? No, it doesn't. As a matter of fact, this is like the perfect drawing for a Morning Star pattern. All right. In fact, the true, the, the best morning star is we move down with the red candle here. We gap away. There's a small window below this red candle. And we put this little doji in here. And then we gap to the upside. Anybody know what they call that? The Japanese actually called that a an abandoned baby pattern. That's right. If there's a window on either side of that little doji pattern it's called an abandoned baby and those can um, uh, be good strong reversal signals remember think about the psychology we gap down to it and then we gap above it that is a reversal that's coming into play now for the for the morning star pattern to be truly valid this green candle or our white candles has to cr cross above 50 percent of that down candle if it doesn't cross above 50% of that down candle, it is not a morning star and could potentially fail. Okay, 
So you want to keep that in mind. This bullish turnaround requires that we breach at least 50% of this down move for it to be valid. You'll find these bottoming patterns in a lot of different configurations. And that's one of the things that's difficult about a candlestick identification is, you know, we kind of draw out these perfect patterns um, in presenta presentations like this, but they can be in lots of different configurations. And I'll show you some of that in some charts here after we finish this up. Okay, now make sure once again, we want this showing up somewhere near a price support, okay? And, or somewhere near trend. Okay, so let's say the last peak of the chart, the price move was up in here, we pull back and then this shows, this pattern right here shows up right in this area. That's where we wanna find those. We want to find those right here. If that happened to be a price support level in the in the price action over here, back on this side, there was another peak right in here that provided that support. All the better. Gives us good, strong possibility of that reversal pattern up. These can be very misleading because they can be they can show up in a lot of different places and it can just be volatility within a trend and people get confused by them and think that is the reversal pattern when it may turn out not to be because it's not finding support or trend. Okay. I, I see a lot of folks that will mention, hey, there's a morning star. The stock has moved up, rested sideways, and this kind of pattern shows up right in here. Um, that's not a true morning star. We need that sell off, that pushback to turn that into a morning star. Now, if this pattern were to occur here and holds right on a trend level, may still be very valid signal of reversal to the upside, but it's not truly that morning star unless we've had selling into that pattern. Okay. The evening star pattern, just the opposite of that. Um, once again, this little doji here in the middle, squashed between an up move and a down move. We want that um, um, we want that selling move on this one to uh, take out at least 50% of that up move candle for that reversal to occur. This candle can be either green or red. It doesn't really matter um, overall. And once again, if it gaps up, and gaps back down, leaves that little candle out there all by itself. That is also called an abandoned baby on the top side. And so a strong reversal signal um, will be in that will be in that picture. Once again, we want to be looking for these patterns somewhere near a price resistance as we rally back into trend or a price resistance in the chart where we've run up, we've hit a resistance level, they just can't push it through, and sellers take over in that chart, okay? Now, other bullish patterns, and I'm not gonna cover every bull bullish pattern in this, but the same things are true in all of these patterns. We want them to be placed properly. One of my, another one of my favorite patterns is the piercing pattern. Um, the market, the stock has been moving down and then we get this nice big candle. We gap down and then rally back up and we break at least 50% of that down candle. That's a nice reversal pattern. Once again, I wanna see follow through to this doesn't mean I won't buy it, but I want to see follow through to this because if it doesn't follow through, it's really not valid. Okay, we need that follow through to the upside. So stock has been down or um, is pulling uh, back into a price support level or we have that uptrend here in place trying to support that and we get that reversal back up in that trade. 
right? The piercing pattern. I love that pattern. It works really, really well. A rising three method. This is very, very similar to what they call a mat hold pattern. Rising three methods is the stock has been running up and then we get this little pause. We get this pause right in here where um, these three candles, and by the way, if it's two candles, if it's four candles, really doesn't make that much difference in here. But what we want is these three candles to stay above the low of this candle here. And preferably for me, they have to stay within the body of that candle. Okay, so this one here, I drew this just a little bit oddly, but the mat hold pattern is going to be three little tiny candles, usually in a nice steady line across. They can be any color. They can be red, green in here, doesn't matter. Okay, but what we're looking for after that, we want it to hold this candles low, and then we're looking for follow through. On that candle above those can be nice little reversal patterns and i even found some in some charts i'll show you here in just a little while the last one is three white soldiers that i'm going to talk about three white soldiers before we get that reversal back up they can sometimes be uh, started by a piercing candle they can sometimes be started by a morning star candle or pattern they can sometimes be started as a bullish engulfing candle you know here in this this one here but we get three strong candles to the upside okay now one of the problems with this pattern and one of the reasons I don't really chase around or look for this pattern much is when I get those three strong reversal days up that puts my stop loss really too low on this trade so I'm not a big fan of the three white soldiers pattern unless I get that coming into play and then we consolidate here or we get that little pullback here that gives me that lower risk entry into the trade but just keep that in mind the three white soldiers pattern can put you in kind of a higher risk trade to your stop loss if it happens to fail okay and then last but not least, the bearish patterns that are the reverse of that. We've got our dark cloud cover, which is really um, uh, the same as the piercing pattern on the downside. The dark cloud cover, market's been moving up here, stock's been moving up, and then we get this red or black candle that shows up. Now, typically, we want to see that gap up. We It has to be above the body of this candle the open above the body of this candle and then we see those sellers taking over pushing it back down breaching through more than half of this candle to the downside that's the dark cloud cover we want to see follow through then to the downside with that candle again looking for these types of patterns at or near a downtrend area or at or near a price resistance area um, improves their odds they can be right at the top of the pattern where there's blue nothing but blue sky above but we want it we if we find them in these two situations it definitely improves the strength of the pattern okay uh, falling three methods just the opposite of the rising three methods market or stock has been moving down and then we get these three little body candles that fit within the body of this okay candle they kind of fit in there and then we get that follow through to the downside okay and last but not least, the three black crows. Once again, not one of my favorite patterns. And the reason is um, I'm going to be looking closer. Um, you know, I might be looking at trying to take this trade at that bearish engulfing rather than worrying about the three black crows. And I'm making my profits here because I'm going to be looking for this pattern somewhere near a price resistance level or somewhere near that downtrend. And I want to get that lowest risk entry on the trade. So if I don't see it until after these three bearish candles have moved down, I'm typically going to wait for the next entry into the trade. When you find these at market tops, same thing is true. I'm going to let that break down, rally back, and then find my entry into that trade.
Okay. And that's the end of these slides, except for, you know, dojis. Everyone kind of knows what the dojis are, and, and they can be, you know, they get all kinds of fun names on them. You know, we all know the spinning top. You're, you're going to find these in consolidations. Buyers and sellers are pretty much in agreement. Maybe a resting period place. It may be a consolidation. It may be something along those lines. It um, these here are probably the more important of those doji candles where we get the dragonfly dojis, we get the long-legged doji, we get the grave star or a star or gravestone uh, doji. Those are kind of important uh, candle patterns. If this forms, of course, at the bottom, a lot of people will just look at that as a hammer. Please keep in mind if there is no head on this at all, we open about the same place we close. They call that a dragonfly doji rather than a hammer. And at the top of the pattern, if we have a candle that has virtually no head on it, it looks like we closed about where we opened on that trade. They will call that a gravestone doji at the top of a pattern. Okay. <clears throat> so. This is what we're going to do from here. I am going to move on and I'm going to show some charts that I have kind of marked up for patterns. Okay, there's a little teeny tiny morning star type pattern. Now, here's the thing about this pattern. It's not one of those patterns that you're gonna readily recognize. And that's why I wanna point out some of these things. You're, you're not gonna readily recognize this pattern because really it looks more like a little consolidation here, right? And that's what I'm gonna be trading. I'm gonna be trading that consolidation as we held support. And even though this kinda of comes in as that morning star pattern, I'm really gonna be more focused on the fact that we held this price support and we get this bullish candle in here. Okay, I'm gonna look for that bullish continuation pattern holding that support and maybe then identifying this trend. Okay, so when I said that one of the problems with candlestick charts is there's so many so many different ways that you can look at things and they're they're not perfect. They're not textbook perfect. And it, it's rare that you're gonna find that textbook perfect pattern, okay? So for example, here we get a hammer pattern, but notice this candle was not a follow through. Huh. What do you do with that? Well, just like in any of these, remember I said the, uh, that hammer pattern needs follow through. I'm gonna place an alert right here and just wait for the trade. If I'm looking at that pattern someplace within a chart. Okay. Let's uh, see, color is only important on engulfing candles. Um, it's gonna, be, JP, it's gonna be important on engulfing candles. It's gonna be important on piercing candles. It's gonna be important on dark cloud covers. It'll be important on morning stars and evening stars. So yeah, your candle color does matter in the reversal um, of these uh, places and, and, and those places where we would be looking for them. So I'll point those out as we, we go along here, okay? And I'm gonna just show, as I go through some of these charts, I'm gonna show you, I marked out a few things, but show you other things. Now, what was important about this hammer pattern is where it occurred, at price support. We went down there and came close to testing that price support and that hammer came in. That's something we want to watch for and pay attention to. An alert in here could have possibly gotten you into this trade early on. It's not the perfect pattern, right? It's not the textbook pattern that you'll always see in charts. Okay. Here's another example here of some of that confusion. How many of you have ever been shaken out of a trade right here on a candle like that? Trend is still holding up. Everything is looking good. We get shaken out of that 
out of that trade, we don't get a very good follow through here. And then we continue our trend. So we're always going to have to look at these patterns very carefully where they're being placed. Is there a resistance around this level? Or is this floating out here in midair? Is there a trend affecting this or is it just floating out here in midair? This, this makes the patterns themselves come into much more context, um, a bigger context of how we want to deal with them in a trade. Okay. Let's take a look at SPLK. SPLK. Does that look like a perfect example of an evening star pattern? Not even close, right? Not even close to the perfect for an evening star pattern. But notice that that ended up making the top in here on this trade. As a matter of fact, I would tell you that I think this is the better of the two evening star patterns. But it did follow through as it needed to, shows us that top, it's that indecision. So one person could look at this and call this an evening star. Another person could just say, hey, that's a bearish engulfing candle. That's what I'm focusing on is that bearish engulfing candle in this trade and trying to uh, discern what that is. Yeah, it could be that bearish engulfing candle. How many of you would look at this and say, hey, no, wait a minute, that's not a bearish engulfing candle. What else could it be? Dark cloud cover? Yeah, dark cloud cover. So we have to really focus in on these patterns and, and, and be focused on the price action of the chart. We had a really strong, super, super strong run. So this pattern showing up up here, whether you call it an evening star, whether you call it a bearish engulfing, whether you call it a dark cloud cover, what this is is a, more than anything is a reaction to an extremely strong move up. I've done this so many times, guys, I can't even tell you how many times I've done this. I have been looking at the hard right edge see this strong stock moving up we get this little pullback and see that candle right there jump into that candle got to be coming back up right it's going to come back up for me and ignore how big a move this was ignore the fact that that's occurring nowhere near a trend and then just get my head handed to me in that trade. Remember, trend, support and resistance, key elements for these patterns to give you good quality trades. You can see the pattern, it may not give you a good quality trade unless they're placed correctly. About CZR, I just marked up several places in here, all this indecision indecision, 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 and these breakthroughs, these are that pop out of the box pattern that I'm always looking for in charts. I wanna see that break out of that level, popping through. Okay, breaking on out, breaking down from this little pop out of the box down. Those are the patterns that I want to be looking for. Here is a, a good example of how someone might see this as an evening star pattern right here. That was absolutely wrong. It's almost a perfectly drawn evening star pattern, right? But an evening star pattern has to occur at a top, not after a sell-off. Okay, very, very important to note. I just went through a list today and pulled out these charts. Um, NTAP, 
NTAP, here's a nice little reversal. That pullback identified trend here. And there's that nice little bullish engulfing reversal pattern. Couple of little days down, resting. And let's pull this back just a little bit further. And let's notice that right through here, we had a little price support in that chart. We could extend that right underneath under here. Found that price support, that identified trend with that bullish engulfing candle. Okay. Here's another one of those examples where we get all of these. All of kinds of hanging min patterns, spinning tops at a top. Keep in mind, it doesn't have to be a single pattern. They can come in groups. That finally didn't confirm itself until we get this follow through candle to the downside. Okay, there's that reversal. So you wanna pay attention to that. Here's a nice little consolidating move. We move up and we consolidate right here. The important part about is this is not the little candles or anything like that, is where it, it consolidated, right there. Whoops, that's not very straight. <laughs> right there where we found that price support in the chart. Once we find that price support in here and we hold that level, that's what's important. We rallied up, we make that possibility of a higher low coming into play. We get that resting pattern right in here. There, we can set an alert, maybe catch that up move, and that begins the upside trend. Okay? The other thing that's important about this, and you guys see me draw this all the time, is the importance of that breaking the downtrend. We broke that downtrend, found a support level, held, and then bang, there comes that trade. The placement of these candle patterns is very, very important. Am I making my point on that? Lulu, there is a textbook perfect, almost textbook perfect, Morningstar pattern. Big reversal in a pullback. And why is that a good pattern? Keyed off a trend. It keyed off of, boy, this stupid tool keeps changing my tools all the time. Keyed off of this price support. You can see the body of this candle holding right through here. Those are the kind of morning star patterns you want to look for, where they're keying off of support, they're keying off of trend. Those will really give you good quality signals for those morning star patterns. Okay. ABBV. There's a nice clean little morning star pattern in here. That's just a little teeny tiny pullback. It's not the perfect pullback in any way, shape, or form, but notice it's forming around trend. It's forming around price support. AGN. I brought up this chart to show that when you look in here, do you see any great patterns? There's a nice little bullish engulfing in here, stuff like that, but you're not seeing any hammer reversals. You're not seeing any um, uh, good morning star patterns. This, this came close. It might actually be a morning star pattern. Came close to a morning star pattern, but do you see any great grand reversal patterns in here? No. So don't get hung up on the fact that there's no super duper uh, pattern in here on the candlesticks. The key factor in here is following this trend, right? 
We look for those pullbacks or consolidations in these trends. Moving back toward trends. You know, we've got our trend line here. Move back toward trend. Looking for those price patterns that occur in those areas. Okay? No perfect reversal candle signal, signal here. Okay? KHC. Price resistance in the chart. Price resistance in the chart. We found kind of a little shooting star. You could call this a dark cloud cover. Giving us that indication of that top. Okay, here's a nice little morning star that could also be seen as a hammer and a follow through. Almost that dragonfly doji on the bottom. Hammer and follow through to the upside. Again, these things are important. This was reacting to trend up here or resistance. This was reacting to support in the chart. Adobe. Inverted hammer. Stock moving down. Inverted hammer shows up. Follow through to the upside. And this stock really hasn't looked back since. Inverted hammers can be a nice th a reversal pattern at times in charts. Here's what's really important, I think, about this pattern is that it came in right at price support. That's the key element of that pattern. By the way, kind of a piercing pattern right here. Kind of. Didn't get a gap down to it. Um, let's see. How many more of these you guys want me to do? CI, bearish engulfing pattern. At a top, found resistance. This is a blue sky. No, it wasn't a blue sky. I was thinking that was a blue sky when I first looked at it. This is reacting to price resistance in the chart. There's that price resistance. People tell me all the time, how, or ask the question, how far back do you go to find support, resistance, and trend? And I always say, as far as I have to. Because when I mark out a chart like this, can any one of you legitimately tell me that price resistance didn't have a factor in this chart? It did. And if you don't take the time to look, you get caught. Okay, you get caught. M.O. Here was a really good example of an evening star pattern. See the evening star right here? We moved up, little doji candle. We moved down, breaking more than half of this candle to the downside. Why was that not a good signal? because it wasn't at the top of a pattern. We're holding support. We're holding support. And there was no follow through, that's right Stella, no follow through to that pattern. That was holding above a support level. Okay. Very important. There's a nice little dark cloud cover. 
giving us that follow through to the downside. It occurred at a price resistance in the chart. Double top high. Okay, notice right prior to that, there was a nice morning star pattern. Happened to be right here off a trend, but we slammed into that resistance. Sellers took over here. That dark cloud cover said that was the end. BBBY, there's a little rising three methods pattern. Stock rallies, we get three little candles held within the body of this candle. And then we reverse and start back up. Rising three methods. Oops. TJX. Nice little morning star pattern here. There's a problem with this pattern though, right? If you look across here in this chart, not the cleanest of support levels in here. We had even broken this trend. Okay, we're holding a downtrend. It occurred below the downtrend. So we see this pattern in here, and this is one of those that just really gives you a lot of pause. We got a beautiful morning star pattern, but I'm not sure I want to take that. And because this had this long legged doji underneath it, by the way, notice gap down to this, gap up, uh, we're at, um, on the other side of it. So we gap down and gapped up. But with this long wicked or tailed doji here, that means my stop loss has to be under here. And I'm likely not to take that trade. It can be a really beautiful pattern, but if I get that long, wiki candle underneath here probably going to stay away from that position because of the risk in the trade here's a pattern that we've been looking we've been looking at this chart a lot here lately there's that nice little pullback little morning star type pattern and this occurred right on support very nice little morning star pattern occurring there pretty small wit, uh, tail on this candle made that not too hard of a trade to maybe get into Last one I'm gonna show you here is another rising three method. Big popping move, three little candles in between, follow through here to the upside. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see that there's a lot of patterns in these charts, but they have to be placed in, in proper areas. They're all, they're all important but they're much more important when they're placed properly within a chart. You know, we've got this nice morning star pattern right here. What made that such a good morning star pattern? Support. That's what made it a good morning star pattern. Okay, so we have to think about how they're placed within the chart to improve our odds in our trades. All right, and hopefully this will help you too. also uh, avoiding being shaken out of a trade when you get a candlestick pattern that's just not, hey, there's nothing around it. it we, we get a um, candlestick pattern, but there's no proof of any resistance or anything in the chart and we get shaken out of the trade and it just goes ahead and continues on up. So hopefully you will find 
you know, in studying these candlestick patterns, how important it is to look at your support, resistance, and trend. Identify those patterns, get those key levels in a chart. Hopefully you will find that to be helpful to you in your trading. Any questions, anyone? Um, RH, no, this is going to be put on the YouTube channel here today. Well, today, tomorrow, something like that. So this will be my first real candlestick pattern on the YouTube channel. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate the nice comments. Um, you know, one of the things that I did when I was learning this stuff is I read the books like everyone else did. You know, I I, I read um, Steve uh, Nissen and, you know, he's really into lots and there's tons of candle patterns. Um, he's often called the grandfather of, of uh, Western candlesticks. And the, the problem I always found is they didn't provide the context as to where they were placed within the pattern. Sure, I could see the pattern. I could see the, you know, three candle or four candle pattern, but I didn't have the context as to where they were placed. And I was making lots and lots of mistakes uh, around that. And, um, even, you know, even the Bigelow book um, on candlestick patterns doesn't spend time uh, talking about placement. Have you guys read those? Would you guys agree that they don't talk about, they talk about the pattern itself and the meaning and the psychology maybe around it, but they don't really get into the details of the placement, where they are, why they're important because of the placement. And I can tell you that made a huge difference for me in my trading once I finally figured out that these have to be put in the right places. Everything has the, its place that it should be. Okay. So thanks, guys, for being here today. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks for the candlesticks folks for joining us over here i hope you got something out of this um i will get this rendered and put together for youtube thanks everyone